Hi, and welcome to COM 3350 Leadership Communication. My name is Annette Hamill, and I'll be your instructor this semester. The purpose of this video is to introduce myself and to give you an overview of how this course is going to work. Even if you've taken online courses before, I encourage you to watch this overview from start to finish as I'll be giving you some information that's specific to this course. So what is leadership? In this course, we take the view that leadership is a skill that can be learned and improved upon. No matter where you're starting from or what personality traits you might have, you can learn to lead through more effective communication. That's what we'll be exploring this semester. I'll be sharing some of my stories with you and ask you to share some stories with each other. We'll look at leadership in companies like Zappos, Google, and Disney, and we'll examine the importance of good leadership in life and death situations like climbing Mount Everest. When you've completed the course, you'll have some real world skills that you can put to use right away. In this video, I'll introduce you to the course content, the components and building blocks that make up our course. I'll talk about some of my procedures and policies for COM 3350. And I'll give you an overview of where to find things on our e-learning site. Maybe you've taken an online course before and you feel that you already know how this works, or perhaps this is all new to you. I want to be upfront with you about my expectations, so let's debunk some misconceptions that students often have about online courses. First, sometimes students think online courses are going to be easier than face-to-face -face classes that are held in a classroom. This is not the case. I teach classroom sections of this course and will be covering the same material here. Also, online courses can be even more challenging for students who have a hard time being organized and self-motivated. Without the discipline of going to a classroom once or twice a week, it's easy to get behind. Secondly, students often assume that an online course will consume less of their time than a face-to-face -face course. This is not the case. You would spend a certain number of hours in the classroom each week, along with reading and doing assignments, and you can expect to spend a similar amount of time on this course. Thirdly, students often assume that an online course means you can work at your own pace. That might be the case for some courses, but not for this one. We have a schedule and we're all going to be moving through the material week by week together. If you skip a week, you'll find that you got a zero on an assignment that was due. You can work ahead, but don't get behind. This course will have readings that you'll need to complete each week. In a moment, I'll talk about our books and our schedule for reading. This course also has weekly assignments. Some weeks it'll be relatively simple, like watching a short video and making a comment on a discussion board. Other weeks, the assignments will be a bit longer, like writing a short essay. This course has due dates every week. Get into the mindset now that there will be something due every week. You can work ahead on most things if your schedule allows, but don't let yourself get behind. There are two books for the course, which are pictured here. The one on the left with the blue cover is our textbook. I sent out the textbook information by email and you can also find it on the syllabus. As you read the textbook, highlight things, take notes in the margins, maybe flag the pages that seem important to you so you can find them later. You will need to read each week's chapter thoroughly before you begin the assignment. Don't rely on the PowerPoints and videos alone and don't count on being able to look everything up during exams. The exams have time limits that will require you to know the material beforehand. The second book on the right is a bestseller called Into Thin Air. This is an adventure story about a group of people who climb Mount Everest, and there are some great examples of good and bad leadership in this book. In some of our assignments, you'll be making connections between textbook concepts and incidents in this book. So look for incidents of leadership as you read. It's really a great book and everybody really enjoys it. A movie came out in 2015 called 
Everest that was based on this book. It's a great movie, and I encourage everyone to see it because it really brings the book to life. But be aware that seeing the movie won't substitute for reading the book. The assignments that are based on the book require you to cite specific incidents from the book. The movie left out a lot of things and changed some things, so you don't want to rely on it. You'll need to get your hands on both books right away. If you're ordering them online, you'll need to have them by the second week of class. Not having a book will not get you an extension on the assignments that will be due, so please get on this right away. Electronic or Kindle versions are fine if that's what you prefer. Let's talk a little bit about the e-learning site. Sign on frequently. Make sure you're signing in every week, preferably early in the week. Make yourself an appointment with e-learning. When you sign in, examine all the contents of that week's module. You'll find various items in each one, sometimes videos, PowerPoints, assignment sheets, assignment instructions. Look at every item in the module. Plan your time for the week. Look at how many pages you're going to need to read, what the week's assignment involves, and decide how you'll complete these activities. And make note of the due dates. There's usually something due on Friday. Again, you can work ahead if that works better for your personal schedule. Now I'll give you an overview of what you'll find on the e-learning site. Even if you're familiar with e-learning, I encourage you to watch this as I'll point out some specific features we'll be using in this course. When you sign on to e-learning, you'll see your homepage. This is mine. Yours may look slightly different, but it will have a similar layout. Up at the top where you see the blue arrow, you can click that little down button and see a list of the courses you're enrolled in this semester. Click on COM3350 and that will take you into our course. You'll be taken to the home page for the course. I want to point out a couple of things on this page. First, there's the news feed. I put an arrow pointing to it. This is where I'll post announcements, updates, reminders, things like that. Give it a glance each time you sign in to see if there's anything new. In the upper right corner of each message, you'll see an X. You can click on that to dismiss or get rid of the message once you've read it. The newest message will always be on top. Another thing you'll see on this page is the calendar. Whenever I set a due date on a discussion board or a Dropbox, it'll show up here as well. This will serve as a handy reminder of assignments coming due. Up at the top right, you can see a little red dot. That's the notifications button. It means there's something new on the site since you last signed in. If you click it, it will list everything that's new. Perhaps someone replied to one of your discussion board posts or I added something to the news feed. It will all be listed there. So whenever you come to the course homepage, make sure you take a glance at the news feed, calendar, and notifications button. This is the menu line for our e-learning page. I'm going to point out some of the course features you can find here. The first item on the menu line I want to highlight is content. You will use this button often. This is your gateway into the majority of our course material. When you click on content, you will see a page that looks similar to this. Each of the weekly modules appears here. These modules are like electronic folders that contain the material for that week. Let's look at a random module. You can see that this one contains three items, a video, a PowerPoint, and a task list. The task list explains your assignment for that week. When I click on the task list, I see it in a window like this and I can scroll through it to read it. 
Or better yet, I can download it to my own computer and print it out. See the download button in the lower right corner where the arrow is? That will allow you to open it as a Word file on your own computer. For many of us, this is more convenient than reading it in that little window on the screen. Now let's look at another item on the main menu bar, the Communications menu. This is where you'll find our discussion boards. Some assignments will ask you to post comments on a discussion board, and you'll access those boards here. For each discussion, I have the eLearning system randomly assign students to groups, so you'll only have to correspond with a small number of classmates. Now let's look at another item on the main menu bar, the Assessments menu. There are several items on this menu that you will use frequently. Dropbox is where you'll submit your written assignments, like the short essays we call checkpoints. The Dropbox contains folders for each assignment, and you'll upload your work there. If this is new to you, don't worry. I'll give you specific instructions when the time comes. I do not accept assignments as email attachments, so never send me an assignment that way. With Dropbox, I have them all in one place, and I can give you comments and post your grade right from there. Assignments sent by email get lost in the shuffle. If I'm expecting 60 papers, I can't have 57 in the Dropbox and the other three buried somewhere in my email. You will always submit your assignments on the eLearning site. Quizzes is where you'll find the syllabus quiz, the midterm, and the final exam. When it's time to take an exam, you'll click here. Grades is where you'll find your scores on each assignment. I will usually leave you some written feedback on the discussion board or in the Dropbox, but if you want to see if I've graded your work, check here. There will be no extra credit in this class. Your grade will be based on the number of points you earn on the listed assignments. My goal on grading is to turn things around in approximately one week, but sometimes it takes longer. I will post your grade immediately when I have it calculated. You'll find the syllabus in the Start Here module. I encourage you to download it to your computer, and I also encourage you to print out the last page, which is called the Schedule. The Schedule appears as a grid, showing the module number, the date, the pages you should read, and the assignment and due date. Many students find it helpful to print this out and keep it in a notebook or post it on the wall above their computer. It's an important tool for planning your time this semester. Make sure you read the syllabus thoroughly and that you're familiar with all of the course policies explained there. Send me an email if you have any questions on those. So here's what you need to do next. Look around the site. Go ahead and open things up and see how they work. My only caution is not to open an exam until you're actually ready to take it, as those are timed. But with everything else, you're going to do no harm if you open up files and take a look at them. Make sure you examine everything in the Start Here module and read the entire syllabus carefully. Then go to Module 1 and examine everything that you find there. On the task list in Module 1, you'll find your assignments for this week. You have two small tasks to complete, and these will give you your first points in the course. I look forward to working with you this semester. I'm really glad you've chosen to take COM 3350. If you have any questions or problems, please send me an email, and always check your WMISH email for messages from me. See you over in Module 1.